Hi guys, if you're a Final Cut Pro editor and there are certain keyboard commands you use regularly like Command and B for blade, Option and left bracket for trim left, etc. I'm sure you'd probably think it would be easier if you could do these commands with one hand or with a single button rather than two. Well in this video I'm going to show you how to set up custom keyboard shortcuts for Final Cut Pro 10, so don't go away. Hi guys, and welcome back to the video. When you first start using Final Cut Pro 10, it comes with a standard keyboard layout with certain shortcuts to perform basic commands. Some of the ones I use the most are Blade or Command and B, Zoom in to the timeline, Zoom out of the timeline, and a whole number of others. But did you know that you can change the shortcut command so it's much easier and faster, and once you set them up, it will speed up your editing so much. So let's jump into Final Cut Pro 10, and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Okay, so let's uh, jump into Final Cut Pro. I'm going to chuck my goggles on so I can see what I'm doing. I've got some sample footage loaded on the project timeline so we can experiment with some of the custom keyboard shortcuts that we're going to create. So first of all, you need to get up to the top menu at Final Cut Pro and Commands. You'll see that we're on the default keyboard. So if we hit Customize, this then brings up the keyboard layout and all of the commands that are in Final Cut Pro are mapped to this keyboard. First of all, if we get into the command groups and hit all Final Cut Pro commands, then this shows essentially every command that exists in Final Cut Pro and what key um, it's mapped to. So for example, if we come up here to Blade, we can see that it's got Command B. So when we've got Command B on the keyboard, it makes the cut. It's also broken down into different uh, categories. So all the editing commands, all the effects commands, general commands, all that sort of thing to help you narrow it down. You can also go up into the search box up here and say for instance you wanted to look at any commands that had to do with the storyline. So we type in storyline, we select all Final Cut Pro commands and then any commands that has storyline in that command will come up. The other thing you can do is hit the key. And you can see, for example, if we hit B, then over here we can see what commands are mapped to the key B. So just by hitting B, it will select Blade Tool. Command and B will blade something. Shift and B will blade it and bring up the blade speed. So when you first use Final Cut Pro, all of the commands are mapped at their default. And that's fine, but there might be some commands that you use over and over again that you might want to make even quicker. So for example, if we go back to B and we can see that to make a cut or a blade, we use Command B. Now that is something you do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times in, a, in an edit. And I for one get a little bit sick of having to hit one key, take my hand off the mouse and then hit the B to blade. So I'm going to change the blade command so I just have to hit the letter B. I don't want to have to hold down the command key. Now there are lots of different ways to do this and I'll show you a couple of them as we go through. The easiest way is to hit the B key as we've got it already selected. You can see that command B will blade. If I take that command, click on it and drag it up to where it says no modifier, I'm going to drop it in there. Before it does that, we get a message that says you can't change the default keyboard layout basically. You have to make a copy. So do you want to make a copy? Yes, we do. Now you get to name it. So we'll call it, for example, custom keyboard and go OK. Now we're working on our own custom keyboard with the default as the base and we can make any changes we like. Now if we go back down here, we see that Shift B blades the clip, but just by hitting B with no modifier also blades the clip. Now I'm going to leave it like that because at the moment I don't have another use for the shift B. And also if I forget in the future that I've actually created a custom and I hit shift B, I still want it to blade. So let's just save that and I'll show you what I mean. We'll close that. We'll go to our, our clip and let's say for example I wanted to blade it there. Now normally you'd hold command and hit B and it blades. But now since we've set up the custom command, all you need to do wherever you want to blade the clip is just hit B, boom. So for me, when I want to use a command over and over again, I've started looking at the commands that I need a modifier key to execute 
and I've tried to change it so I just hit one key rather than a modifier key and that key. Now if for example we wanted to use the default keyboard shortcuts again, it's no problem. We just go back up to Final Cut Pro, hit commands, and you see that the custom keyboard is selected. I've got a mic commands here, I've created my own custom keyboard. And if you wanted to change back to the default, it's easy, just go back up to default. I'm English, so I'm gonna pick English. French would be interesting. And bang, you're back on the default keyboard. So say for example, we wanted to blade it there and we hit the B, not gonna do anything. B is just gonna select the blade tool. So I'll hit A again to hit the select tool. Okay, so I'm gonna go back up now to the custom keyboard that we were using. And now I'm gonna show you seven more of my favorite keyboard shortcuts that saved me heaps of time in Final Cut Pro. So I'll open up that keyboard by going Final Cut Pro, Commands, and Customize. So the first two are Trim Start and Trim End. So to do that at the moment, say for example, if we have a look down, down here, we've got a cut and we wanted to make another cut, say here, and we wanted it to delete all of that. So there's a couple of ways to do it. We can blade it and then select that and then hit delete. That's worked fine. I'll Command Z to undo those. Or you can go Option and left bracket and it trims that start of that next segment of the clip. Again, I had to take my hand off the mouse, I had to press Option and then I had to press the left bracket. It's the same if you're trimming at the other end. So let's just say here, we wanted to cut it here and we wanted to delete that piece there. You have to go Option and right bracket. Painful. So I want to be able to hit just the brackets and make those cuts without having to hit the option key. So I'm going to go back up to my customized keyboard and I'm going to go straight to that key there and I can see that down here option and this left bracket is the trim start. I don't really use the select left edge command so I'm just going to override that by dra dragging trim start up to there and it automatically overrides it. I'm going to do the same with the right bracket. I'm going to go down trim end because I don't really use that select right edge either. I'm going to drag and drop it there. Now let's say for example we go, oh actually I do want to keep that select right edge but maybe we can put it down where the option one was. Okay that's fine. So I'm going to type up here select and it's going to come up with select right. Here we go select right edge. There's the command there and as you can see it's not mapped to anything, no modifier and no key. So I'm going to click on that key to bring up the list of commands. I'm going to drag and drop that over to there. Boom. So now just by hitting the right bracket key will trim the end, but if I did want to select the right edge, I use that option command. I'll go back and do the same for this one, but I'll make that select left, select left edge, drag and drop that over. Cool, so we'll save that and close it. Now if we go down here, I've got a cut there. I want to cut here and delete this. All I have to do now is hit that left bracket. Boom. I want to do the same at this end. I want to cut there and delete what's left over. Hit the right bracket. Boom. Love it. Right, a couple more. Commands. Customize. One of the things I find I'm always doing as well is just tweaking the volume of my clips by a decibel at a time. I couldn't remember where that command actually sits, uh, so I'm just going to type up here, raise volume, raise, uh, there we go, and it's already come up, raise volume one decibel, and it's actually control equals. Okay, so on my keyboard, there's a plus on the equals key as well, and there's a minus on the dash key. So I am going to where it says plus on my keyboard, it's on the equals key, I'm going to select that key and I'm going to take this raise volume one decibel and I'm going to drop it right on there. If I have a look at it now, raise volume one decibel, I'm going to go to the minus key, I'm going to have to find lower, lower volume one decibel, I'm going to drop that there as well. We're going to test these in a minute. The other thing I do constantly is zoom into the timeline or zoom out. So if I look for zoom, zoom in, you can see it's mapped to command and equals. 
and Command and Plus. So I find that my left hand is typically hovering around the bottom area of the keyboard. So I want to make Z zoom in, Z for zoom, makes sense to me, and the X to zoom out. So I'm going to click on the Z. It's already got the zoom tool to bring the zoom tool up, but I'm just wanna, I just wanna zoom in. So I am gonna drag and drop that zoom in onto that. I'm gonna go to the X, select clip range. Again, there's hundreds of commands that you don't even really know about or really use. And that's fine, you might decide that actually select clip range is something that I wanna do when I hit the X key. I'm actually not even sure what that is. If I ever find out and I ever use it, I'll just change it back. So I'll go to zoom out, oops, hit the X key, zoom out, drag and drop that up there. So we'll go and test that in a second. The last one I wanna show is how to add a basic title. So up in the search box, I'll type title and connect default title is control T. I always forget that and I'm often using it and have to look it up. So it'd be really handy just because I like to keep things simple. If I could put that on the T key. Now currently if you just hit T, it'll change your cursor to the trim tool. But that's okay because I can use this drop down box over here to change to whatever tool that I want. So I don't really use that. So I'm going to make connect default title happen on the T key with no modifier. We're gonna save all those and then we're gonna close. We've tested the uh, bracket left and right. The next thing I wanna do is the volume. So I'm gonna select my clip and I'm just gonna press the equals key, which has got my plus on it on that key as well. And you can see the volume up one decibel at a time. And if I hit the minus key, one at a time. You can actually see the volume change and it's a lot easier to do it than, than trying to tweak the that little bar. If we turn the inspector on up here and hit the audio inspector, you can see the volume there. We'll select our clip. We'll, you watch the volume up here. When I hit the plus, hit the minus, boom. So that's raise volume and lower volume. The next ones I want is zoom in and zoom out. So you might have some very, very fine tweaking that you're wanting to do in here. So now all I have to do is hit Z for zoom and it zooms in. And then you can tweak it. I'm gonna use the right bracket to get rid of that portion. Then I'm gonna hit X and zoom out. So you can do it real fast, it's really nice. I've decided I want a title here. So all I need to do now is hit T and it brings up the basic title. Again, I wanna blade it over here, so I'm just gonna hit B. I don't have to use the modifier keys and it saves me so, so much time. There might well be other commands that you use. So say for example, you're <clears throat> often bringing clips down, we'll select a portion there and you'll drop it on top for example, but you don't want the audio. It might be uh, some B-roll that you're wanting to put up there. So typically I'll right click that, go detach audio um, and then select that and delete it. Now, if you're doing that a lot, it might actually pay to look at a shortcut key for that. So I'll just delete that. We'll go back up to our keyboard, customize, and what's the command? Detach audio. So I'll make sure all Final Cut Pro commands are selected up there. I'll type detach audio. There we go. So there is actually a shortcut key for that, and that is Control Shift S. Seriously, who can remember that? So let's pick a key, maybe D, easy to remember. At the moment, the command for D with no modifier is overwrite. The other thing you can do to find out what these commands actually do is, we'll just forget the detach audio for a second, is I'll we'll type up overwrite. And if you click on it, it brings up a little explanation. So overwrite is overwrite at the skimmer or playhead position. Okay, I don't really find myself doing that, so I don't mind if I'm gonna override it. So I'm gonna go back to detach audio. I'm gonna bring up the D key. I'm gonna drag and drop that command. So now detach audio is on the D key with no modifier. Save, close. Right, bring my audio down, uh, my clip. Hit D, boom, detach the audio. But let's say you wanted to go a step further. What if you just wanted to bring that 
clip down without the audio in the first place, so you didn't have to detach it. Okay, so I'm going to delete that. I'll go back up to my keyboard. It's quite fun creating customized keyboards because you might edit in a slightly different way or there might be effects or tools that you use over and over and over again that you have to go command shift option zero I mean like there's so many complicated shortcuts it's great that they're there but some of them are very long if there's something that you use over and over again create a custom uh, shortcut for it so the command that we're looking for because I've done my research is to go one step further and that is to connect the, the video only to the primary storyline. So I'm going to type up storyline. I'm going to search for that. If I can type properly, that'd be great. Now down here, connect video only to primary storyline. And at the moment, there's no shortcut for it. So for argument's sake, I'm going to use the D key again. So I'm going to bring up the D key. I'm going to take this connect video only to primary storyline. I'm going to drop it right there. Now save that and close. Righty ho, let's do a test. So I'm going to go up to here, let's just say select some other B-roll. I'm going to select the portion that I want. I'm going to put the play here where I want it, which is there. I'm going to hit D, and it's just brought in the video without the audio. Man, that makes life so much easier, especially if you're dragging and dropping lots of B-roll from other videos, um, and you're having to detach the audio. So now you can just connect the video with no audio. So there you go guys, if you think about the commands you use most often and set up custom keyboard commands, you'll be able to speed up your editing process so much. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you got value from it, please hit the like button below. And if you want to see more of this type of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks guys and I'll see you in the next video.